The Cape Town Cycle Tour is arguably the best way to experience one of the world's most beautiful cities. And each year on the second Sunday in March, 30,000 cyclists do just that. They include everyone from amateurs who may only cycle once a year to elite riders set on racing for victory. The elite women have their own race, which starts in Fishhook, giving them a clear run at the course. This ensures that the race attracts international riders like Trehas Tesfe, world-class triathletes like Emma Pallant and South Africa's top mountain bikers too. The pre-race favourite, however, was the defending champion, Cherise Willate. She would be lining up in the colours of customised cycling Bioplus. The elite men's race started in the event's traditional venue, alongside the Castle of Good Hope. Among the 150 rider strong elite field were a number of teams who would seek to control the 109 kilometer long race. The 42nd edition of the Cape Town Cycle Tour followed the race's preferred route, starting in the city centre, ascending Nelson Mandela Boulevard, passing the University of Cape Town, descending into Newlands and climbing Edinburgh Drive. The Blue Route took cyclists to Musenberg, then on to Cork Bay, Fishhook and Simonstown. Smitswinkel was the second major climb before the drop to Misty Cliffs offered respite on the way to Noordhoek. Chapman's Peak Drive is an undoubted highlight for racers and social riders alike, while Sekabossi is universally dreaded. From its summit, the majority of the route's 1,220 metres of climbing is completed. Thus, it is largely downhill all the way to Greenpoint and the finish alongside the city of Cape Town Stadium. Before the sun had not yet risen, fireworks, the day's first hoopla and the elite men's field got the 2020 Cape Town Cycle Tour off to a flying start. The first challenge of the race is the climb out of the city centre along Nelson Mandela Boulevard. Once they were on the highway proper, the commissaire's flag dropped to signal that racing could start. Specialised Craig Boys was the first to attack. He was soon joined by three others. The quartet formed the day's first break and went to work establishing a lead before the peloton could get organised behind them. Noting the value of the move and the potential for TV coverage for his sponsors in Buko Giant, Marco Hubert accelerated from the main field. The mountain biker would try to bridge to the leaders. Others tried to follow suit, but by that stage the peloton had crested the first climb and the opportunity to escape had evaporated in the cool pre-dawn air. Pace remained high though, keeping the leading quartet and Hubert on a tight leash. It was too early in the day to let any potentially dangerous riders gain too large of an advantage, especially as Edinburgh Drive provided another opportunity for the riders ahead to extend their advantage. The peloton, like the late summer sun, was slowly warming to the task at hand. Though when the sun did begin to peak above the Hottentots Holland Mountains across False Bay to the east, it revealed the makings of a spectacular day. Warm weather and a gentle breeze provided the best conditions for a cycle tour in a number of years. With the promise of a good day on the bike ahead of him, the Premier of the Western Cape, Alan Windy, was thankful that nominative determinism had failed him. Ryan O'Connor spoke to him on the start line. This is a very special event for you as a cyclist, uh, as, a, as a Cape Tonian. This is the one you can't miss on the calendar. Absolutely, it's an amazing event for Cape Town, uh, an amazing event for our economy, for social cohesion, for doing, doing stuff for a good cause. Obviously the racing snakes, I mean, they've all, they've all gone already. Um, I wasn't in those groups. Um, but it's about who you ride for, it's about fitness, it's about, uh, yeah, it's about just having a great time. It's a great, great weekend and I mean the weather's played along this year, it's a beautiful day. And I must just say, you know, um, the sponsors, like, you know, you can see all the banners all over the place. So it's sponsors, participants, and they make this event, that's why so many millions and millions of rands go to charity. 
That's the first thing. And the second thing I must always say to the Cape Tonians, thank you so much. Because if you're not riding, you're on the side of the road cheering on and supporting. And we know you're stuck in your driveway. You can't get out. But thank you very much, uh, you know, for doing your bit in uh, helping charities and helping and helping this amazing event. The cycle tour is essentially a massive charity ride with numerous organizations, including the Warrior on Wheels Foundation, using it to raise funds. 100% of the surplus funds generated by the Cape Town Cycle Tour Trust are distributed equally to the PPA for Cycling Development and Safe Cycling Initiatives and the Rotary Club of Clermont for Social Upliftment. For the elite women, it was their best opportunity of the year to showcase how exciting women's cycling can be. Though their race is a shortened route, the action is frantic from the gun. By the first rolling hills approaching Smithswinkel, Pallant was on her own though. The British triathlete and two-time world duathlon champion had a decision to make. Should she forge on alone or sit up? With the peloton unhurried in their pursuit, Pallant's decision was made for her. She had to push on alone. Behind the lone leader, the tightly bunched peloton, even on the steepest slopes of Smithswinkel, pointed to the relatively sedate pace being set. Though the bigger teams were careful not to give Pallant too much of an advantage. Thus, by the summit, Emma Pallant held a 33 second lead on the chasing field. Long straight downhill and downwind stretch past Cape Point, that advantage was foreshortened. And once the customized Cycling Bioplus team started riding for Charisse Willate, the gap plummeted rapidly. In the elite men's race, the day's early break was reeled in as the peloton hit the beachfront in Musenberg. Craig Boys and company had battled manfully, but there was never much of a realistic chance that his madcap break would stay away for the duration. The escapees caught, the action lulled briefly before sparking back up again through Cork Bay and Fishhook. Narrow roads forced the peloton to spread out. Exploiting a steep but short rise on the road, as the group entered Glen Cairn, Jacques Lloyd slipped off the front. The specialised rider was initially the man alone on the attack. He had hoped to draw out a number of strong riders to give his attack a chance of succeeding. But team tactics between the likes of Office Guru, Pro Touch, and Alpha Body Works Giant were putting paid to Lloyd's dreams of riders to share the work on the front with. Behind him, the big teams were unwilling to let a member of a rival squad join Lloyd in the break. Kilometers ticked by as they jockeyed for position. Eventually, after nearly 10 kilometers of moves being shut down, the group allowed Alex Pavlov, Drikas Kutsia and Barney Pubruk off the front. The trio were given free rein and rode off in pursuit of Lloyd. And catch him they did, swelling the breakaway's number to four. They rode well as a quartet, Taking turns on the front, they soon established a handy lead on the long but not particularly steep Smithswinkel climb. Behind, the peloton was strung out as they increased the tempo on the run into the climb. Once on its gradual ramps, they slowed again. Slow and steady, the main field had the advantage of massive numbers and teams with riders who had yet to put their noses into the wind. They could afford to be unconcerned by the break there were still 60 kilometers in which to reel them in. Over the summit, the leaders held a one minute advantage. The quartet then forged on, rolling through and sharing time on the front, passing through Klaas Jachsberg, Scarborough and Misty Cliffs, maintaining their advantage all the while. Once over the Smithswinkel climb, the favoured teams, including Alpha Body Works Giant, began to send riders to the front. The chase to bring back the break was on. With the big teams sharing the pacemaking duties on the flat roads in the run into Chapman's Peak Drive, the escapee's advantage was soon whittled away to nothing.
In the elite women's race, Emma Pallant had been caught and a reduced peloton was back at the front of proceedings. This served to usher in a new wave of attacks. Emma Pallant was again responsible for much of the aggressive racing. The triathlete seemed to permanently be on the attack, hurrying along her breakaway companions Yolandi de Toy and Melissa Kretzinger on the run into Chapman's Peak Drive. On Little Chappies, after having shed her companions from the three-woman breakaway, Pallant was once again the lone leader. She built an advantage on Little Chappies and on Chapman's Peak proper, she continued to forge on alone with her nearest rivals only briefly coming into view further down the pass when the famous road's twists and turns brought them in sight. Thus, Pallant had to time her looks over her shoulder to see who was in pursuit and how far back they were. The lone pursuer was Paris Edwards, 25 seconds behind Pallant. Behind, the peloton was spearheaded by the mountain bikers Ariane Luti and Candice Lille. The pair, then still set to start the Absa Cape Epic the following Sunday, were only racing because of the separate elite women's race. Ahead of them, Emma Pallant was descending into Hart Bay. The deceptively gradual gradient of the Chapman's Peak descent forcing her to work hard. Harris Edwards remained in no man's land between Pallant and the chasing main field. By the foot of the descent, Emma Pallant's lead had been halved. The greatly reduced peloton was closing inexorably in. Led initially by Candice Lille and Francis Janse van Rensburg, then on the ascent of Hart Bay's main road, young Trahas Tesfe increased the pace. Anticipation was mounting for fireworks on Sekabossi. Once Emma Pallant was swallowed up by the charging peloton, the attacks came thick and fast. Pallant was not a spent force, however, and she managed to summit Seikobosi in a select front group. She was joined by Francis Janssen van Rensburg, Candice Lille, Hayley Breen, Vera Adrian and Cherise Verlaite, amongst others. It's very special, you know, I've said in my interview before, hats off to organisers. Um, you know, women in today's age is fighting for equality and you know, we definitely get that by having our own start race and as I've said numerous times, a shorter race just makes it so much aggress more aggressive. I don't know if you guys saw the attacks going from the start, but you know, like, we were averaging way over 40 in the first 30, 40 k's. It was really super aggressive and very fast and it also just gives us a chance to, to race our our own tactical race and not to just sit with the men and fight for a wheel at the finish so you know we were about 65 women on the start line today and every year it's just going to keep on growing. Well late edged out Frances Janssen van Rensburg to claim her fifth Cape Town Cycle Tour title. UCT's Hayley Breen secured the final podium position. Cherise Willade secured victory in a time of 2 hours, 7 minutes and 48 seconds. The rest of the top 10 were all awarded the same time. Back out on the road in the elite men's race, Jacques Lloyd was doing another turn on the front. He was relieved of his duties when Alpha Bodyworks Giant sent a rider to the front to set a blistering tempo for the assault of Chapman's Peak. That assault split the already slimmed down peloton and a madcap descent ensured nobody who had been dropped got back to the group. This virtually ensured the race would come down to a reduced bunch sprint. Though there were still twists and turns through Hart Bay to be navigated, and the final climb of the day, Seikobosi. Once over the summit of Seikobosi, the main field remained spread out in single file. Sweeping down the Twelve Apostles' descent, past Landudno towards Camps Bay. The group, though, was split between two kinds of riders, those who desired a small bunch sprint and those with teammates in the chase group behind. The workload and the run into Camps Bay was thus unfairly split and the leaders found themselves joined. The peloton now swollen in numbers, there was a lull in the pace. It was then that Travis Barrett knew he was in with a shot at glory. All he had to do was out-sprint some of South Africa's best-known stars. 
It was probably the longest sprint of my life, but my teammates uh, let it out. We knew we had to make it hard up Chapman's Peak and uh, Sekibosi to get rid of the fast guys. There were still some really fast sprinters here at the end there. So I knew if I wanted to win, I had to race really fast. Um, and my teammates started leading out with about one and a half k's to go, and they just dropped me off in the perfect place to, to pull it off. So I quite couldn't have done it without. I still can't believe it. It's you know it's something that I think every rider dreams of. And a few months ago, I set myself the goal of you know wanting to win a big classic in South Africa. But I mean, it's easy to think about doing things you know while away, but to actually achieve them is unbelievable. Barrett achieved the unbelievable by holding off two of South Africa's most formidable sprinters, Commonwealth Games bronze medalist Clint Hendricks and Jay Julius. As he had explained, his office guru teammates set up the sprint from a long way out, and he somehow managed to hold off the fast finishing Hendricks. I opened up my sprint, I think, just at the right time. I started fading a little bit towards the end. I could see, well, I could feel Clint Hendricks coming along on my right hand side, but the finish was just close enough to hold it off. An elated Travis Barrett sealed his first Cape Town cycle to a title in dramatic fashion by a tie width from 2016 champion Clint Hendricks. Travis Barrett's winning time was 2 hours 30 minutes and 4 seconds. Clint Hendricks was second and Jay Julius third. Louis Fiss and Jakob Fenter rounded out the top five places. The elite women's podium saw Charisse Willet joined by Francis Janssen van Rensburg and Hayley Preen. While Travis Barrett was joined by Clint Hendricks and Julius on the elite men's podium. Both Barrett and Willet were more than worthy recipients of the Carol Boys design trophies. With the champions crowned, the media focus in general and Heart FM DJ Ryan O'Connor's in particular could shift to the social side of the Cape Town Cycle Tour. What is the Cape Town Cycle Tour without the very best in family and that is Pick and Pay. A man who's been to almost every single start I think of this event is Mr Raymond Ackerman. It is so good to see you Mr Ackerman. What a special event this is for Cape Town. I think, I think it's my 35th time of being here. It's, it's an amazing event. It, I mean, the way the, cycl the cyclists are still coming in their droves and thousands, and, and the way Cape Townians came out for the opening, I really think it's a great day for Cape Town, and it's a very positive day. And just to be here and see Table Mountain and queues and queues of people ready to ready to ride, and there's so many people along the route welcoming them. It really is a lovely day. Sugar and Dion Bing are also catching up with riders on the start line. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling excited and a bit anxious, but very, very excited to be here. How often do the two of you cycle together? Every weekend. This is my 11th tour and I can't wait to get out of here. I would like to say thank you to the Cape Town Cycle Tour for everything that they're arranging for us. And um, yeah, maybe we'll have a good ride today and let us all stay safe. An atmosphere of nervous excitement was palpable on the start line. But once each group had been set off, that nervous energy was converted to kinetic. Then there was no longer time for nerves, just broad smiles and exhilaration at the anticipation of the adventure ahead. Climbing Nelson Mandela Boulevard, the cyclists are largely without crowd support. But rounding Hospital Bend, they are greeted by the sound of drums. Sugar stopped to find out more about the first of many excited roadside fans, who are as much part of the Cape Town Cycle Tour as the riders themselves. Why the drums? And I believe you're here every, every year. Yeah, yeah, we come here every year, um, as, as you said. Uh, I've just always enjoyed drumming. And there's always an amazing response, especially from the old the old folks there's like a yeah coming out of the corner and i think it's probably the first like real energetic thing that they they see coming yeah. around this corner yeah. so it's uh, it's a lot of fun and i'm calling calling all the drummers come up here next year and the year after we'll be here the vibe on the roadside as sugar continued to discover was electric are you here every year every year we live down the road we've done it a whole bunch of times but now we've got kids so <laughs> Ten times. So if you can't do it, you've got to come and support the tour. I think 
this is what the guys like. They like the, the motivation, they like seeing the crowds. And I remember when I was riding, you know, you like to see people on the side of the road. That's part of the tour, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So great, great event, great event. I'm loving your vibe. Your family is amazing. Thanks so much. Yeah, we like to support. Uh, we moved in here about 15 years ago and we've had this set up now for the last 15 years. Uh, we support the cyclists, we have family, friends, some of the cyclists they stop, they have a good sister, they have a cup of coffee. We just love the vibe and all the support that uh, you guys have going and that we try to help as well. Edinburgh Drive is lined virtually from foot to summit with fans. And that is a good thing too, as it is a deceptively tough climb. For some, the motivation to summit it and the rest of the climbs en route is bigger than just cycling, as Sugar found out at the top. Yeah, no, uh, we've got a few riders that's uh, riding today, so that's why we're also here, supporting them. And it's uh, for a foundation, we're supporting young women fighting breast cancer. And it's a really amazing event, and we're always here every year, and it's, it's great stuff, and, and all the best to all the riders. With the cheers of the roadside fans ringing in their ears, even the least prepared cyclists found the motivation to conquer Edinburgh Drive. The climb may be steep, but the reward for mastering it is a long descent. In fact, the next climb only came 20 kilometres later, so there were long, easy kilometres to enjoy. The Blue Route may not count among many riders' favourite section of the course, but that is probably more to do with the exceptional beauty of the rest of the route. It does, however, offer the chance to relax and even consider if you should have bought that new item from the Cape Town Cycle Tour Expo. The Cape Town Cycle Tour Expo is far more than just an event registration. It offers cyclists the first taste of the amazing buzz of the race. Kicking off on the Thursday before the race, it brings the 30,000 competitors, their family members and cycling enthusiasts from across the country to the city of Cape Town Stadium. It is also an opportunity to acknowledge the huge amount of work that goes into making the event the success it is. What we are so proud about is that a handful of staff can organise an event that is so big that there's 30,000 people plus all the other things that happen. And it's just amazing how that office staff just puts this wonderful thing together. Everybody that you talk to says, but how can such a small office staff put on such a magnificent event and it runs so smoothly? They don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but it does happen every year. The first order of business at the Cape Town Cycle Tour Expo is to collect one's race packs. The race packs contain all the essentials for Sunday's big event, including numbers and timing chips for those who did not have a race tech chip already. It also showcases the history of the Cycle Tour and the heritage of cycling in South Africa, while the Royal of Honour boards provide legends with the opportunity to sign in for the 2020 race. Headline sponsors Pick and Pay ensure that riders can start fueling for Sunday at the Expo while stationary bike challenges set up by Garmin and Avis and the Pedal Power Association's merchandise stand, which promotes safe cycling, remind that there is a charity angle to every aspect of the event. As pick and pay, it's absolutely fantastic to be here at the Cape Town Cycle Tour. So special for us to be involved in something like this. Really a brilliant opportunity to show off our city some of the best cycling routes in the world. So it's pick and pay. We love being involved. We're about uh, healthy living, about healthy eating, so we feel like we've got a little bit of an excuse to be involved, but really it's something we've been involved in for over 20 years. We just think it's something really special, an event that so many people come and love and enjoy. So it's something that we're proud to be associated with, uh, but we're just so excited about this year's Cycle Tour. We think it's going to be bigger and better than ever, and as pick and pay, uh, we're really proud to be just a little part of making it a success. Everyone who passes through the Cape Town Stadium doors plays their part in making the Cape Town Cycle Tour a success. Even if they only come to see the latest and greatest in cycling industry products. The Expo features 300 exhibitors and nearly 40,000 visitors over the three days of registration. From Oakley sunglasses to bikes, the Expo had it all.
back out on the road. Sugar had worked her way down to Musenberg, where she continued to seek out the most animated fans. You look like you are a veteran. This is your spot. Is this where you come to every year? We, yeah, we try to come. We've got a team that's cycling for our college GWC, so we come to support and all the other cyclists. For many, the false bay stretch through Musenberg, St. James and Cork Bay is the highlight of the entire route. It is certainly one of the most popular sections for fans. Residents come out in their thousands to cheer on the riders, from the races in the early morning to the social cruises late in the day. The atmosphere is jovial throughout, and coffee shops and bakeries are filled to capacity. On the bike, the main road segment through the coastal suburbs is best ridden during the cycle tour. It is the only time cyclists will experience it free of motor vehicle traffic. For those not yet old enough to take on the 109 km long cycle tour route, the Junior Tour provides an introduction to a lifetime of cycling in the mother city. With three distances, for children up to the age of 12, the Junior Tour is a fantastic family day out. The route even features water points, just like the following Sunday's main event. We are an amazing uh, green point uh, at uh, setting on next to Cape Town Stadium, and uh, we're here to hydrate uh, all the participants and the parents of the Cape Town Junior Cycle Tour. It's an amazing day, beautiful. Lots of people came out today. I think a bigger field than, than last year, which is amazing because it's, it's important that we grow this event. The parents also to get excited on see the kids racing. Um, and yeah, it's a very nice day to, for all the sponsors to be out here and just making it, making it great for everyone to get something cold to drink, something nice to eat and enjoy the day with your family. Um, you know what, at the end of the day for us, the important part is to bring people together and to make a difference that matters within the communities we operate and live in. Uh, and that's what we make today. Today is just not about us doing a marketing activation, but today is for us to connect people, uh, to make, make them have fun, make them express themselves and enjoy the day. It was clear that everyone was enjoying the day out on their bikes. The 1.2, 4 and 7 kilometer route options looped through the stadium complex and crossed the spectacular Greenpoint Park. Pedaling and pushing, in the case of parents with younger kids, it turns out is hungry work. And upon returning to the lawns of the event village, a stop at the Spur Steak Ranch's outdoor restaurant was in order. No burger ever tastes as good as a post-ride burger. Yeah, for the Junior Tour 2020, Spur is very, very proud to be involved in this event. We are a family brand. This is a family event. All what we would like to see is boys and girls on bikes. Uh, we invest a lot within mountain biking, within cycling, and this event is in line um, with our strategy. It has been absolutely amazing to see you know, parents here, families, boys and girls here, um, having this fun day and having it with us here, you know, being involved. The Junior Tour is a fun day out for the whole family. For the older children, riding the four and seven kilometer routes, getting to ride through the Cape Town Stadium was a rare treat. The awe-inspiring structure was circumnavigated by both routes, with half the loop taking place within the stadium itself. Very good, the ride was fantastic. The experience for the kids was brilliant, uh, highly enjoyable. I would recommend everyone to do it, it really was excellent. The Junior Tour comes highly recommended then, and it's easy to see why. The kids love it, and so do the parents. It provides a morning of healthy fun, a family outing to remember for the rest of the year. This is the third year, and it's very well organised, and the kids love it. It's so nice to see everyone out and getting some exercise, and hopefully when they're bigger, then they'll be doing the cycle tour. There was off the bike fun to be had at the Junior Tour too, with jumping castles and ample places for families to relax. The young cyclists could upskill in the technical zone too, building confidence, riding bumps and bridges. And a massive lucky draw to cap it all off.
The dream is for the cycling bug to bite the junior tour riders and for them to one day take on the full Cape Town cycle tour. It is only through their growth in cycling that the event will live on for another 42 editions. The Cape Town Cycle Tour Trust is a trust that's been made up from six members of the Pedal Power Association and six members of Claremont Rotary. And then we have the events office that puts on this absolute fantastic event known as the Cape Town Cycle Tour. I think it make, what makes it so special is that everybody knows that they are contributing towards charity. It started off as an event that we wanted more attention as cyclists from the authorities, but then it's turned out to be this wonderful, what most people call the cycle tour of recreational cycling in the world. The biggest timed event, cycling timed event in the world, and it is well known throughout the world. Um, most of the events that take place around the world now have copied our event, which is a wonderful feather in our cap. And it started off with 500, it's now over 30,000. So we've grown with this baby and it's now become a wonderful child to us. The Cape Town Cycle Tour is a challenge, but an achievable one. It requires a little commitment to training rides to ensure a pleasurable race day experience. But the race also seeks to promote a healthy lifestyle year round. Stephen Drew, who lost a leg in a motorcycle accident, is one of many inspirational riders who took part in 2020. While off the bike, the Ocean View community staged a silent protest. They used the race to inspire their fellow South Africans to treat each other with respect and dignity. Respect and dignity starts within. Maintaining a healthy body and a healthy mind through cycling could be step one of this process. For those already getting out and being active, staying hydrated is key. Knowing that there is world-class medical support at hand helps too. So the Cape Town Cycle Tour, being the, the largest timed race in the world, as you know, is absolutely a magnificent showcase of camaraderie and a sense of community. And that means that we have an influx of between 30 and 35,000 avid and sometimes uh, daring cyclists taking to the roads over this time. And that means we need to prepare and, and be ready for the event in terms of uh, medical uh, support, but also just in terms of enjoying the experience and sharing in the experience. Our offering basically became official 25 years ago, where we became the official medical partner of the Cycle Tour and consolidated that offering to improve on the service every year and bring in a team of, uh, of trained and ready experts. So where we're at now involves obviously medical support along the way, medical support at the end, and obviously on standby an entire city is ready to receive any form of, uh, of injured or uh, you know someone suffering from an illness. Uh, there are for example 50 doctors, 30 nurses and 200 paramedics in terms of staffing, in terms of vehicles and emergency response. We have motorbikes, we have response vehicles, we have the BMW motorbike crew, they're always special every year and then of course we also have uh, the ambulances. What's special about this event is there's no other event that I'm aware of in our province that brings together a complement of, uh, of unity among so many service providers for this for the scale at which this is occurring. So the the absolute contributions of the uh, EMS crew from the city of Cape Town, the metro services, uh, as well as even St. John's, we've got the weather service, the traffic service, the South African police service, all involved in helping us make this a safe and enjoyable race for everybody. Part of the enjoyment of the Cape Town Cycle Tour is undoubtedly the challenge that is Chapman's Peak Drive. One of the world's most scenic roads, Chappies is a significant test, but sharing the road with colourful characters eases the load, as Morley Esben discovered. 
I must say, I think dressing up really does help because the whole way everyone's been cheering the Teletubbies on, which has been amazing. So I've been feeling good. Yeah, this is my first one. I'm feeling a little sore, but in terms of what we're trying to do, Taryn owns a business. She's a seamstress. <laughs> um, she makes awesome outfits. Um, <laughs> last She's year, done seven years, different outfits every year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, last year. year they did bananas in pajamas. This year's Teletubbies. I think next year you guys are doing SpongeBob. So it's <laughs> it's become a bit of a tradition more than anything. And that's just the sort of things that we're seeing along the route. The sort of gears that we're seeing, and, and, and as Taryn says, it's the sort of thing that keeps the motivation going, especially when you hit the top of Chapman's Peak and you're really, really starting to feel it, and you're really starting to doubt yourself, and you're really starting to think, why did I do this? Why am I putting myself through this? It's the exact sort of thing that lifts you up and really does give you uh, the enthusiasm to go through the next 30, 35 kilometers or so before we get to the end of the 47 Cape Town Cycle Tour. It is lovely, the vibe is going, the, the, the ride is still very much in high spirits the rain seems to have stopped now so uh, let's look to some uh, look forward to some good times as we uh, make our way towards the last stretch of uh, this Cape Town cycle tour Chapman's Peak is one of the event's signature attractions and a feature which brings riders back year on year it is however not the only reason for returning to the cycle tour there are reasons aplenty perhaps even as many as there are participants the people next to the road the, the crowds it's just the support yeah, yeah. And the fact that they close off the roads for us, and it's a very, yeah. it feels it's a very special race, very special event. Yeah, well organized, lots of uh, water stops, uh, lots of support, um, yeah, very well organized. Yeah. We'll definitely be back. They will definitely be back, but will you be joining them? Perhaps you've skipped an edition or two. Now could be the time to start plotting your cycle to return, aiming for a personal best after years away or introducing a partner, child or grandchild to the joys of the race. Perhaps you've never ridden the cycle tour before. It's been on your bucket list for years, but you've never taken the plunge, committed, entered, trained and ridden. Now is the time. Commit to a healthy lifestyle goal and a ride that could change your life. Commit to being a hero. It's easy to think of being a hero as something you see on TV. We think a hero is supposed to look a certain way, act a certain way, and play a certain way. Somehow we've come to believe that being a hero is reserved for a chosen few, for prodigies, for superstars. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. But being a hero is not some rare DNA strand, not some precious thing. It's no more unique to us than breathing. We're all capable of it. Being a hero starts simply by thinking about others, planning futures and taking action. It connects people, solves problems, and lays the foundation for their success. Being a hero isn't always measured in tenths of a second or numbers on a scoreboard. It's a bit bigger than that. Being a hero inspires teamwork and moving together. Sometimes being a hero is something you plan. But most of the time, it's just something you try. We are not born heroes, we are made by the choices we make each day, by the actions we take along the way. And if being a hero doesn't come knocking at your door, maybe you should go knock on its door. Being a hero keeps others safe. It supports and teaches and creates opportunities to dream. There are no grand celebrations here, no speeches, no bright lights. But here, there are heroes. Somehow, we've come to believe that being a hero is reserved for the chosen few, for the superstars.
the truth is, being heroic is for all of us. This is not about lowering expectations. It's about raising them for every last one of us. True heroism does not seek praise and is not done because people are watching, but because it is the right thing to do. Heroes touch lives, shape futures. They aren't always aware of what they've done, but we see you could be a hero and you could be a hero. To all the heroes, we see you. To everyone who rides, no matter your reason, simply taking part or riding for a charity, to all the volunteers on race day, to all the supporters along the route, you are heroes. Because being a hero is not in one special place and it's not in one special person. Being a hero is wherever somebody is helping another. Even if each rider does not believe themselves to be a hero, the fans certainly do. They cheer everyone on like they did Sharice Willate and Travis Barrett on their way to victory. Yes. <laughs> Heart Bay, as always, was a hive of activity. Fans gathered to cheer the cyclists on as they mentally prepared for Sekabosi. At just under 2 kilometers in length, it's no challenge on fresh legs. But after 90 kilometers of riding, it's a different matter entirely. Fan support is thus warmly welcomed. At the summit, the Peninsula Beverages Hydration Point and an alluring aroma forced Dion Bing to stop and investigate. So we walked behind the little refreshment station across an open field to the smell of, what is that smell? It's like, it smells of mashals. I'm with Robin. Hey, what are you using? Yes, we are using Arnica Ice. Um, so they've kindly sponsored for us, um, but yeah, it helps a lot with the massaging and it smells really good, like you say. Yeah, and I followed the smell around. But Robin, where are you from? I am from East London, but I'm studying through Stellenbosch University, yeah. And did they tell you you'd be massaging from what time this morning? This is actually the third time in a row. Um, I've been here, this is the third year. Um, so I kind of knew what I was signing up for, but yeah, today has been been hectic, been busy, but it's been a lot of fun as well. Yeah. And, and what sort of uh, massaging have you had to do? Is it just generally legs or people like got their toes sore, or their shoulders or what happens? Um, we've seen some interesting things, but mainly just um, cramping, quads, yeah, hamstrings. As the people get tired, you know, the legs start giving yeah. up a little bit. <laughs> it was the smell. It, it was the smell. And you, and you arrive, you're feeling how? And how do you feel now? Mm feeling there's going to be pain and now feeling there may not be so much pain. <laughs> so you're about ready to get back on the road, Eskol? I am, yeah. Ah, oh, that's freaking awesome. Fortunately, the wind was from behind, pushing cyclists up the climb with the help of the Virgin Active Angels. By early afternoon, the wind had built to a fresh breeze and a light drizzle was falling on Sekabosi. It did nothing to dampen the riders' spirits though. Riders were cheered over the summit and on to the long, snaking descent towards Camps Bay. Only 15 kilometers, many of them flat or downhill, separated the top of Sekabosi from the finish line at the Cape Town Stadium. The wind bellowing clouds down off the 12 Apostles peaks high above was largely blowing over them. They could thus enjoy the closing kilometers, reflecting on a day well spent on the bike. For those still out on the course, it had been a long day, but with each passing pedal stroke, a more successful one. One that not even a little localized drizzle would spoil. 
for over the finish line the sun was still shining brightly, as if to be calling the cyclists home to Greenpoint. On the finish line, Paul Kay awaited, ready to hear about the riders' experiences out on the route. How many cycle tours have you done? I have done seven. No, but what, what made you decide to do it the first time around? Ah, I just thought, why not? Yeah, it's amazing. Beautiful. Just get on the bike and do it. It's amazing. Once you have conquered the hills and the mountains, any obstacle is just nothing. What would you say to other women out there who think maybe they can't do the cycle tour? I think that they should go for it. I was somebody that, I mean, I'm not very fast. I'm not fast at all. It's not about being fast. It, exactly. It's not about being fast. It's about having fun. Just put in the training and you can do it. It's an amazing, um, it's just an amazing route. It's an amazing way to see Cape Town. And it's just like being out there among so many other people and just experiencing the hills. It's great. Uh, we're from Harry Smith. We've cycled on the 20th of February. We left Harry Smith. We've cycled all the way down to Cape Town, 1,700 kilometers. We arrived on Friday. Saturday was a West Day. Uh, Dion Bastadino is from Harry Smith. Uh, 30 years ago, he was in an accident. He actually uh, practiced for this tour. He had an accident. He was disabled, and that was his biggest dream for him to do the, to do the uh, Cape Town tour. Wow. So it was a dream from his side, and that's the reason why we are there for dreams. So kind kilometers, well done to the whole team, to everybody out there. It's been a privil privilege to know all these guys and for what they did for me. And um, I just want to say thank you for them and God bless them all. It was an amazing experience in my life. And thank you to all you guys that made it possible. While many had already finished, some still had 13 kilometers to go. Some may argue they were the lucky ones, still able to soak up the beauty of Cape Town by bike. A couple who had already finished though, were adventurers Rian Mansa and Vasti Geldenes. Paul Kay caught up with them to find out how much fun their day had been. When you, <laughs> when you rode across oceans and you've cycled around continents and you've paddled around massive <laughs> islands. Is 109 kilometers enough? No, this and this was awesome. It's such an advert for Cape Town. Hey, that's just definitely what it is. And it's good for the relationship building. We only had one argument on this ride. <laughs> Listen, Basti, you know, you, you've been stuck with this man through some crazy adventure. <laughs> this was tough today. Eh? We, um, we took it on with not that much training, but you know, the weather was perfect. I think if it wasn't as perfect as today, we would have struggled. The perfect weather was not the only help Rian Vasti and the rest of the Cape Town Cycle Tour riders received. The community who lined the streets were as influential as Paul Kay discovered. They cheered every cyclist on as if they were racing for victory. Tell me about the people of Cape Town. Just tell me about wow, the people you're riding with. Wonderful... Tell me about the people oh, of the Oh man, let me tell you one thing. You've got a wonderful community here. People here were having fun. They were cheering us up. I had a wonderful time, really. Ah, man. The last 50 Ks was wonderful. But let me tell you one thing. There are two hills that showed me flames. <laughs> uh, Sengerbosi, the last one, I did it so wonderful. I did not walk it. I rode it. And I did uh, that, that other one, was it Chapman's Heels? Oh, man. Some had to get creative to avoid walking, but right on they did. From Camps Bay to the finish in Greenpoint, one final climb and a beautiful sweeping coastal road remains. For all but the most exhausted, those sights flew by too fast. But that is just another reason to return again next year. How was your ride? Very, very nice, I loved it. Um, weather was perfect, wind was perfect. Um, 4 hours 22. You! Chuffed with myself. How many have you done? 17 today. Which, which one stands out for you in your memory? There was one where I did a 3 hour 45. It was about uh, 5 years ago. That was my best one. But today was really nice. No cramps, no nothing. I loved the ride. The gears was awesome. Yeah, loved it a lot.
a man who knows a thing or two about cycling to and in beautiful places is Ron Rutland. Paul Kay caught up with him to hear about his Cape Town cycle tour experience. So here's the thing, if you don't know, this gentleman and his buddy James decided to cycle to Tokyo for the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, it was 2,000 days ago that I left Cape Town Stadium and spent 27 months cycling through every country in Africa to the World Cup in the UK and that was a trip that obviously completely changed my life and opened my eyes to so much. Um, but there's nothing like coming home, you know, and um, it's been a great, yeah, great honour to be back at the Cape Town Cycle Tour um, and to be able to show Cape Town off to James and say he's never been to South Africa, he's only been in Cape Town two days and I promise you to say he was, he's, we spent seven months together cycling across the world and his eyes are just like this. Yeah. Misty cliffs, all of that, he just couldn't, couldn't believe it, so it's been amazing. After such a scenic day out, it was unsurprising that there were smiles and celebrations all round from each finisher. Even those who were forced to finish on two legs rather than two wheels cracked a smile and acknowledged the crowd's applause. The applause of the fans is but one reason for elation on the finish line. The internal satisfaction of a goal completed is by far the more important. Even if the targeted time was maybe not met this year, there is always next year and a promise to return fitter and faster in 2021. You've been watching the Cape Town Cycle Tour. Until next year, goodbye.